about trying to find places to go camp and and do some rock climbing and, and hiking and so on. Sp- I want to spend some time up in in um, uh, why am I drawing a blank? Where the observatory is, San San uh, San Pedro Martir. Yes, uh, absolutely. Well, and I was trying to that that region right there. You're talking that observatory. I think is one of the highest elevations in all of Mexico, not just the Baja Peninsula. So I, I haven't spent much time up in there either, but uh, really cool area. Pretty neat to go up and see that telescope there. For, for listeners that uh, are remotely interested in astronomy or, or um, things to do with space, uh, it is – I visited there not too long ago with Cameron again um, and uh, learned that that is the – I believe it's the number two best location for um, – with the telescope and the observatory component of, of, of astrology, um, there's uh, a lot of things with regards to the geography and the placement of that observatory, and then obviously just the lack of light because of the lack of development around there. But fascinating that they were able to get uh, some of the stuff up into that location um, as early as they did with the roads being as, as uh, difficult to manage as they were. I, I was told that they actually the, the reason that the, the road did get paved all the way to the top now had to do with the transportation of the latest mirror or whatever that, that is in that telescope now. Like it, the, the mirror was so expensive and so fragile that they needed to have smooth roads to get it up there. And I, I, I can't say that that's fact. Somebody shared that with me, and I don't know if it's true or not, but it, I believed it. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I could I could see a lot of validity with that one. But yeah, what a what a great opportunity to get up up in there. Well, hey, let's let's circle back to, to Bahia de los Sueños. I got a question for you. Uh, yes. Good good friend, um, Gary Wagner, who I haven't seen in a long time. I know he had a, a restaurant bar out there, the Giggling Marlin. Is it still there? You know the the restaurant is it's it's changed hands a couple of times. Gary doesn't doesn't own it anymore, but is still involved in the area. He's got a beautiful home out there as well. Um, and I, th- I think most recently it is named the fifteen thirty five. And how they they came up with that, I think, is they tied it into the Sea of Cortez, right? And and really, I, I believe it's Hernan Cortez uh, when they founded the Sea of Cortez in the year of 1535 ah, okay. is, right. is what, yeah, is what they brought into, but yeah, great little beach, uh, beach restaurant there. And one of my favorite places to, uh, watch the Baja sunset, uh, cause from that location, you actually watch it set over the water and the mountains, which gives you a little bit of, a little bit of everything, but it's a great place to, to stop at. And, uh, since then there's also another restaurant that's opened up oh, in that really? region. Wow called the yeah Centro de Trenes, um, which is over there um, right next to the Gran Sueño property. And um, that's a that's got a great, great atmosphere there as well. So, yeah, if anybody's out there and, and traveling that area outside of La Paz, um, La Ventana area, Los Planes, definitely make it a, you know, a stop on your trip to, to get out there and get on that beach. And it's just just pristine. So you said Centro de Trenes. Is that the train room? What used to be the train room? Or still is the train room? <laughs> it, it is. Yeah. I was wondering if anybody was going to catch on to that, right? So so my boss, uh, you know, he's got a love for, for model trains when, when he was growing up. And uh, what really started out as, as his kind of train room, which is really another word for the tequila bar, um, <laughs> which which is always great. Um when when he turned that into the the boutique little resort there, it, it became the restaurant, and they kept the name Centro de Trenes, and that's uh, that's owned and operated now by Teddy uh, Aparicio, who's a good friend of ours out of out of La Paz, and he does a great job there. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, I I wanted to bring that up because that was one of the things that that I was so blown away with when I went there the first time was that train room. And anybody that's listening, if you have uh, the opportunity to make it out that direction, and why don't we? Uh, you definitely need to be there. You need to go and see the train room because it's it's like every child dream of of model trains. If you were ever into model trains, um, but l- let's talk about how to get there. 
um, it isn't difficult, but it is somewhat remote. So can you kind of walk people through if you're going to drive? Um, you're obviously more than likely going to be coming from La Paz, or I guess you could be coming from Cabo, but how do you get there? Yeah, and I mean, it's interesting. More and more people coming up from Cabo, and even like yourself, Ryan, when you and Amy were living yeah, in Cabo, right. right? It's almost that. It's almost that staycation, yeah, right? So, so, so many of us ex- expats are now living, working in Cabo. Lo- you know, living that that dream life. But where do you where do you vacation? So we do get a lot of people coming up from Cabo, and it's it's getting easier every day. Obviously, with with the roads and, and everything. But first and foremost, coming out of La Paz, cause we're in the municipal of La Paz, right? That's our, that's our main city, our closest city. Uh, you're really going Southeast, uh, out of La Paz and you're taking the route 286. Um, so when you're leaving the airport and you come onto Florodores, which is kind of the main road, which, which turns into trans peninsula highway. Number one, you kind of make a left onto route 286 towards Los Planes. And it's, uh, you know, it's a 56 kilometer, uh, about 38 miles or so drive outside of La Paz. And you go th- come down the hill and you go through this beautiful valley of Los Planes, which is um, a lot of farming, real similar to Constitution, Vizcaino. They're growing chilies and corn and onions and just a great little farming town. And you pass through that Los Planes and you go another oh, 10 kilometers or so, and you really come to the end of the road, right? Like, you know, all great places where the pavement just stops and you travel on and you come into Bahia de los Sueños and, and you're on the beach really at the end of the road. Um, so that's really the, the best way to get there out of La Paz. Coming up from Cabo, you know, there's a number of different ways. If you're coming up from the East Cape, Los Barilis area, you're, you're taking the Trans Peninsula Highway number one, north up to san antonio which is another one of those just cool little local towns just adjacent to il Trinufo, and you'll make a right um you know down to los planas and then mo- most which by the way that road's with, paved it, now that didn't used to be paved it, it is it didn't no yeah. that uh i think it's probably eight or nine years ago they, they did get that road paved so your your pavement all the way there to the property which is great um and then coming out of San Lucas with the improvement of Mexico Highway number 19, right, which everybody really knows is the Toto Santos Road or the, the Pacific side of the highway. Um, being that is the new four-lane road, you're really taking 19 up. And then when it connects with Trans Peninsula Highway number one, what we're doing is we're making a right heading south to Il Trinufo and then making a left at San Antonio down into Los Planes. So, you know, a number of ways to get there. Um, and, and you can find it on, on most maps or ask a local and, uh, they'll gladly uh, give you directions out that way, but definitely a must see. So I know that, um, uh, La Ventana is close by. Yes. Um, it is. And I know that that's a bustling, growing community right now. I have friends, uh, the Murphys, that just moved up there recently. Do you know uh, Steve Murphy and Annie? They used to own Pez Gato and Tropicat. You know, I, I know of them. I, I don't know okay. that I've ever had a chance to personally meet them. No. Good friends of mine. I actually brought the – with, with okay. uh, a few other guys, we brought the, um, the Tropicat, which is a 60-foot catamaran, through the Panama Canal from St. Croix together back in 2002 oh. or 2003. Which, uh, anyways, I know that I know that La Ventana is a is a growing town, a huge uh, uh, crowd of of uh, kiteboarders and and windsurfers and so on. Um, and I know there's a few events that isn't there a spear fishing tournament or something that's based out of there, or a free water blue water diving. What are some of the 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 close by events that take place in that area? If someone was interested in different things, or yeah, do you know? Is. Maybe I mean, you don't know. Well, I mean, I know I don't know that I know of them specifically, but you know, the whole El Sargento La Ventana area is bustling. There's a lot happening over there, and and you mentioned the the, the kiteboarding, right? I I think it's one of the number one or number two spots in the world for people to learn how to kite surf, right? Now, and a lot of that I think has to do with how the wind comes through the Soralvo Channel, they call it, right, which is between the peninsula and Soralvo Island. 
Um, I'm not a kite surfer myself, so I don't, I don't know the accuracy on that, but that's, that's what I'm told, but they do hold, hold the La Ventana classic. They do hold the spear fishing. I think it's Tim at Palapas Ventana over there, um, host the, the spear fishing events and, um, but just a, just a, a great, great little zone there. Uh, probably about 20 minutes away from, from where we're at over there at Bahia de los Sueños. Yeah, I think the, the point I'm trying to make is that there's there's the places on the map, there's the places that, that you hear about people visiting vacation in Mexico, right? You know, Acapulco or Mazatlan or Cabo. Um, True. And, and more and more there's these little niche areas that are, are expanding, which, you know, there's good and bad with the expansion, but um, so much of it seems to be niche oriented. You know, you have the the like I said, the, that La Ventana area is so big for the windsurfing and it all ha- or, or kiteboarding, and it has to do with with just the natural geography. Um, and I think it's fascinating that these places that are are so out of the way and and difficult to get to are growing, and 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 you're seeing the infrastructure. Um, be developed to support communities. A buddy of mine um, has has said this for years that uh, you know if you want to if you want to know where the next greatest developments are going to be, follow the surfers. Surfers go into places you know for one reason, and that's for the good waves. And they you know they they start these little uh, communities, if you will, where they're camping on the beach, and eventually someone builds something and something builds something, and then there's a restaurant and and so on. So I think it's it's cool how um, these little communities start for certain reasons. Well, and I, I think I think you're right on it. You know, earlier today I was actually on the phone with with a good friend of ours, uh, Marco Ehrenberg, right out oh, of yeah. out of Los Cabos, and you know we we were we were talking. Uh, we're talking about our, our place up there, Bahia de los Sueños, but he made a comment how, you know, just seeing what's happened in the corridor, right? If you look at the corridor from San Jose del Cabo to Cabo San Lucas and, and the years and so forth that that really took to get where it is today, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's some of the most beautiful coastline on the peninsula, but um, it all started, right, with surfers, and fishing. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, even back to the day when, you know, for those of you listening that know where the Marina Cabo San Lucas is, that actually used to be the airstrip, right? They used to land the airplanes there and take the skiff out to the boats because you'd have to anchor up in front of the original Hacienda, which I think was built in like 1964, 65. Don't quote me on that, but I think it was real close to that era and, um, and came down the region fishing and surfing and and look what you have today it's it's uh just a a booming economy uh in baja sur oh yeah well you know what man it's it's uh i I always love getting buddies on and talking about the places that we love in baja um that there's that we could go on forever uh i do have one more question for you and, and i try to ask every one of the guests it's a super serious question um and i hope i'm not hitting you out of left field and and you don't have an answer for it but you spent some time in Baja. You've been up and down the peninsula. Where do you find the best taco? <laughs> you know, that's, that is a great question because there's, there's so many different kinds, right? Whether it's pastor, the carne asada, what, you know, what are you going for? Um, I think, I think most recently, I'm gonna to have to give give a shout out to a Ciasada. Oh, right! They, I know where that's they, at. That's right just, over by the go kart track. Yes, it is. Yes, <laughs> right there. Uh, they're they're so consistent. It's excellent. The service is good. Uh, they never miss a beat. So yeah, I think for the for the best tacos, uh, well we're giving a shout played, out to my a friend. Yeah, you know what? And, yeah. and I'm going to I'll just tell some listeners a little bit about that. So, uh there was a time period where um I was the the manager of a of a go-kart track in Cabo San Lucas, just outside of Cabo. And right next door to that is uh this restaurant of Ciasada and it's I mean it's it's a traditional taco stand, you know? And although I haven't seen it for a while. Hopefully they haven't like closed it in and turned it into a real restaurant, have they? 
Well, they're, they're doing a little expanding, oh, like, like all of Baja Sur, <laughs> but I, I still like to think of it as the traditional taco. Oh, yeah, yeah, so I would I had lunch there every day for <laughs> three or four years. You're the first person that's brought that up. Well played, well played. Well, it, you know, um, it's uh, it's a good good little spot on yeah. the peninsula. 